For our graph, we want to compare what we observe with the Puma with what we would expect. So the first thing we're going to do is take these observations and figure out what percent of the time the Puma spent in each of these habitats. To do this, we're going to press the stat button and press enter. Now these are your list and in list one we're going to input all these observed values. So in the stem of the problem it said there's a total of 540 point locations. So what we want to do is divide each of these values by 540. Now there's a shortcut to do this on the calculator. If you press over and then up to highlight list two, you can input a function in. So for function we're going to put second and one, which types list one, and we're going to divide everything in list one by 540. So now when I press enter, this is the observed proportion of time in each of the habitats for this puma. So now for our graph, we're going to compare the percent of each type of habitat actually found in this puma's territory with the percent of time that it's spent in each type of habitat. So we're going to make a side-by-side -side bar graph for this comparison. For our horizontal axis, we'll do habitat, and we'll write each of the five habitats there. For our vertical axis, our highest expected percent was 72.8, and nothing in our observed percentages was higher than that, so we'll go up to 75%. And we'll use two different color bars to make our comparison easier. So 1.3 of the Puma's habitat is actually valleys, but it spent about 7% of the time there. 72.8% of its actual habitat is mountains, but it only spent 57% of the time there. So only about 1.1% of the Puma's habitat was shrubs, but it spent about 10% of the time there. 5.3% of its actual habitat was forest, versus the 22% of time it spent there, and 19.5% of its habitat was barren mountaintops, but it only spent about 4% of the time there. So let's color this all in. Now if the puma didn't have a preferred habitat and it just randomly walked around its entire territory, we'd expect all of these different bars to be close to the same height. But that's not what we see. We see some differences there. It seems like the puma spent more time than we would expect in the valleys, shrubs, and forest, and less time than we'd expect in the two mountains, the, the mountains and the barren mountaintops. So it does seem to have some preference. But are these differences we're seeing significant? That's what part B is all about. So we're going to use the four-step process in part B. So for the state step, we want to perform a test of the following hypotheses at the alpha equals 0.05 level. Our null hypothesis is the puma does not have preferred habitats, and it simply spends time in each habitat proportional to the amount within its territory. So that is, p sub valley is 0.013, p sub mountain is 0.728, p sub shrubs is 0.011, p sub forest is 0.053, and p sub barren mountains is 0.195. So the proportions are what we see in its territory. Our alternative hypothesis is the puma does have preferred habitats. That is, at least one of the proportions above is incorrect. So notice our state step has our significance level, alpha equals 0.05, and it also has our hypotheses, and we've defined our parameter p, the proportion of time the puma is spending in each habitat. Now we're checking how well the puma's point locations matched the habitat we know about. So we're going to use a chi-squared goodness of fit test. We're going to see how well or how good did our observed data fit our expected data. The first condition is random. In the stem of the problem, we're told the tracking caller sends points on a random basis. So that condition is met. Now we have to check for large sample size. To do this, we're going to use our calculator and our list again. Now, as a reminder, list two is the proportion of time we actually observed the puma in each of these habitats. So we're going to go to list three and type in the proportions of time we expected to observe it for each habitat. So for valleys, it was 1.3%, 72.8% for mountains, 
1.1 for shrubs, 5.3 for forest, and 19.5 for the barren mountaintops. Now our sample size was 540, so let's calculate how many of these point locations we'd expect for each habitat. So to do that, I'm going to go to list 4 and highlight it and use my function bar again. So I'm going to say 540 times second 3, so it's going to multiply list 3, our expected proportions, by 540. So there we have it. These are our expected cell counts. And the good news is all of these are greater than 5. So our sample is large enough. For the independent condition, we must assume that each point location is independent and does not affect the other point locations. And depending on how long this study was conducted and how quickly the puma moves around, this may or may not be meant. In the do step, we need to calculate our chi-square test statistic, which is the sum of the quantity observed minus expected squared divided by expected. So if we press the stat button, in list 1 we have our observed counts right here, and over here in list 4 are our expected counts. So if we go to list 5, we can start calculating our chi-square test statistic. Press up so you've highlighted list 5. So we need observed minus expected squared. So I'm going to do open parenthesis, observed, which is list 1, so second 1, minus expected, which is list 4, and close parentheses and square it, and I'm going to divide that by list 4. So the sum of all these values is going to be our chi-square test statistic. So if I press stat and I go to calculate and do one var stats on list 5, I can see my sum is 895.74 approximately. Now I need to figure out the p-value associated with that. So if I press second vars to get to the distribution menu, down here you'll see chi CDF. My lower limit is going to be 895.74. My upper limit's just going to be a really large number. And for degrees freedom, we're going to do how many habitats we had minus 1. So there was 5 habitats, minus 1, we have 4. I'll press paste and then enter again. It says my p-value is approximately 0. That means we have overwhelming evidence against the null hypothesis. Now before we conclude, let me show you another way to do this. If you press the stat button and go over to test, down near the bottom, option D on this calculator, is the chi-square goodness of fit test. So it says where are your observed counts in list 1, where are your expected counts? Ours are in list 4. And it says how many degrees freedom do we have? We have 4 degrees freedom because there was 5 habitats minus 1. Now when I click draw, it's going to draw the chi-square distribution for 4 degrees freedom. So at the bottom there, we have our chi-square test statistic and our p-value of approximately 0. I'm going to press stat again, and instead of pressing draw, I'm going to go to calculate. All right, so there's our chi-square test statistic and our p-value. And this is what's really cool. We have our contributing factors. Actually, this is a list of five numbers, and if we add them up, we get our test statistic. And we're going to use those in just a second. So let's write down those contributing factors. So each of these contributing factors is correlated with a habitat. So our greatest contributing factor, our most surprising result, seems to be associated with shrub. Now we're ready to conclude. So with the p-value of about 0, which is less than any reasonable alpha value, we reject the null hypothesis. There is overwhelming evidence to support the claim the puma has preferred habitats. Now we're going to do some follow-up analysis. If we look at our contributing factors again, we already noted that shrub was our highest contributing factor. This was because the observed proportion of time the puma spent in the shrub was about 10 times the actual amount of shrub in its territory. So that's a lot of evidence that it has a preference for habitat. If we divide this 388.8 by our total chi-square test statistic, we can see that about 43% of our chi-square was contributed by the shrub habitat.
Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got 100 problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.